This is Oshadi, one of the areas in Lagos State. Hello there and a warm welcome to another edition of Super Eye on Super Screen YouTube 45. Of course, I'm Adenike Oweye Ajiboe. Yes, 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 this is the program that beams a searchlight on the ears of the society. And so today, we want to look at safety and security on Lagos roads. And I want to tell you that the increase in loss of lives on Nigerian roads has become uh, worrisome, you know. And so we need to talk about the causes. Uh, what is really causing them? How can we uh, begin to control some of these uh, causes so we don't have a uh, high record of deaths on uh, roads and now the National Bureau of Statistics NBS has said that 11,363 uh, road accidents were recorded in 2016. Now the report identified loss of control and dangerous uh, driving as major cause accounting for 15.43% and 8.53% of the total accident recorded, of course, in 2016. In addition, a total of 30,105 Nigerians were injured in these accidents. However, 2,482 was recorded in the first quarter of 2018. Now, Nigeria also recorded 2,598 deaths from road accidents in just six months in the outgun year of 2018. So today, I am being joined by a very important guest in this area. Ladies and gentlemen, join me to welcome the unit commander of Federal Road Safety Corps in Ojota, uh, Umar Bamayi. You're welcome to Super Eye, sir. Good evening, Mr. Jiboye. My name is uh, ACC Umar Mohamed Bame. You once again, the unit commander for Federal Road Safety Corps, Ojota Unit Command. Many thanks for coming in, Super Eye. Thank you very much. So quickly, let's start with um, uh, road um, accidents, uh, basically. Um, in legal state, can you give us the statistics? Just tell us uh, the causes of uh, road accidents in the state. Okay, basically, uh, because I'm coming from uh, Ojota Unit Command, I will really want to concentrate on my own territory because uh, if we're going to be talking about Lagos State, I think uh, as a component of uh, every other unit command bringing in their figures, but the area I'm basically representing is where I'll be talking about. Uh, for 2016, we had uh, a total of uh, 90 crashes along Ojota, and then in 2017, we have uh, 87. That's a reduction of 3%. And also in 2018, we had uh, 26 road traffic crashes, meaning a 70% reduction. Uh, if we're going to look at what is really bringing about this, mm. first and foremost, we should think about Lagos. Lagos is a state of its own. Densely a populated. state with uh, a difference. <laughs> with excellent drivers, mm. uh, to cut our story short. Excellent drivers. Excellent indeed. drivers. That is because it's a city of excellence. So <laughs> I want to believe most okay. of the drivers like in like their that. own capacity think they are very excellent and uh, they drive uh, in ways and manners that doesn't go well with the rules and regulation. And this invariably brings us back to the road traffic crashes. We're not really talking about just the population in terms of the urbanization. Mm -hmm. But we should know that there's a lot of pressure on the road because uh, like Ojota represents a gateway where going and coming of vehicles or influx of vehicle into uh, Lagos State is predominantly exactly. taking place. So I think we have a lot of road crashes there. And uh, for now, I want to say FRC working with other agencies have been able to, that is why we had that reduction of 70% in 2018. 
But what are the factors that you would identify as the major causes of accidents, uh, particularly on a jet? Yes. Uh, basically, if you are going to look at it, we have three major causes of road traffic crashes, okay. uh, which is predominant with what we have all over. We have just three causes. We have the human factors, we have the vehicular factors, and we have the engineering factors. Uh, among these three uh, causes of road traffic crashes, we will agree, or you will agree with me, that human factors has 85 to 95 percent majorly of causes of road traffic crashes. And when you're looking at it intensively, definitely you should be able to itemize it because when you look at it, the human as a body is the one that controls both the vehicle and the road. Okay. So if the vehicle is being driven by a cool-headed driver, definitely you are bound to have less crashes. But when we have the vehicles being driven by drivers that are using phone while driving, they are, they are having their vehicles overloaded, they are running beyond the expected speed limit, mm. definitely we are bound to have crashes because human beings takes a lot of consideration. If the vehicle is bad and you refuse to drive the vehicle, the vehicle will not drive itself. So when we are talking about vehicular problem, you know the vehicle is faulty. You rectify the fault of the vehicle. This cannot lead to crash. But when you know the vehicle is bad, and you said, like in the normal Nigerian syndrome, let's just manage it. By the time we get there, we'll be able to make the repairs. You don't know if the vehicle will not be able to take you to those long distance because you don't even know the level of the damage you have on that vehicle. Rather than you check in, you say, let's manage. You know, in Nigeria, we always try to be managers for every kind of situations, and I think that is what is uh, predominantly affecting us. So when you go to the other factor, which is the environmental factor, oh, yes. we're talking about bad roads. Bad roads exactly. I know, I know you're going to say bad roads. <laughs> but sincerely speaking, um, when you look at it very well, bad roads, yes, it causes road crashes. But where we have the highest level of road traffic crashes is where we even have these good roads. Like Abuja, for example. You know, Nigerians just feel it's a very good road, so let us rock on the road and before you know it some of them they don't know walking with other drivers it's always very different like walking in a congested area where the roads are bad because i want to believe where the roads are bad like what we're seeing on the screen now i don't think you need any frc to come and tell you uh, go at the maximum move. speed limit of 100 or will you need any frc to tell you watch out for an okada man coming mm -hmm. so definitely you want to be careful because you know the roads are bad Okay, but, you know, you know, you know, good roads uh, yeah. is supposed to uh, be a factor that will also, you know, guard against a road accident. But mm -hmm. here in Lagos State, with the good roads, we're still having uh, accidents on our road. So, yes. would we now say, uh, is that not supposed to be a blessing? No. Okay. Yes, in two ways, it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. But in the other way, it's a disguise. So, we call it a blessing in disguise. Because, you see, when the roads are so bad, it makes us very comfortable. It makes us not even think that there are other road users. And remember, the road is not meant for you alone. I'm always saying that. We have the road users in terms of even the pedestrian. Commercial. Look at people, commercial uh, orcas. Mm. You can watch orcas on just coming down from Ojota. The numbers of orcas that are there, you coming down from uh, Ojota, down to this area, Ikorodu Road. It's very intense. And this could be problems to other road users too. So, in other words, you feel that speed, uh, uh, um, uh, over speeding is also a challenge? Yes, over speeding is mm. a challenge. Sincerely, it's a challenge. Because, you see, by the regulation, it says when you're driving a car, let's take, for example, on the express, that the maximum speed limit that is expected of you should be 100. You understand? When you're on the highway, it is telling you you should drive at 90. And when you're on the built-up areas like this Ikorodu Road, where we mm. have a lot of passerby, we have a lot of pedestrians, yeah. then we should go as low as 50. And we also have what we call the common sense speed limit, mm. which also might be 20, might be 30, depending on what is happening within that jurisdiction or that environment. You wouldn't believe uh, that in an area now that we have school children crossing or probably it gets to the peak time that we know children exactly. are going to school and then you're going at 100 or you're probably going that's, at 90. That's it doesn't make sense 
So that is what we should really look into. We should try and know. And do you know one funny thing? Yes. Sir. I haven't worked with so many drivers. When I put up this question, the same question that I've just analyzed now, that what is the speed limit that is expected of you as a car driver yes. to drive on the express, mm. to drive on the highway, and to drive on the mm. built up area? Do you know 10% only pass? Really? Yes. Tell me about that. Yes. Because, <laughs> you see, by the time you see somebody saying, I've been driving for mm. over 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and I just asked, I said, do you really believe you have a working experience? He said, oh, God, I can travel. I said, no, no, I'm not talking about you going a long distance. Mm -hmm. But what does it really take for you to travel? Do you know? Speed is one of those things that is really very important for you to use in traveling. Okay. So if you don't know the speed you're supposed to go at a particular road, at a particular distance, then you are equal Bounty. to somebody that is an illiterate okay on okay. Road. all right uh, let me state here uh, this is super i uh viewers at home you can also uh call in uh to make your contributions uh, what do you think are the causes of road accidents in lagos state and uh, what's your word of advice on how to stem you know the increasing rate of uh road accidents all right uh, back to you sir um from all that we have said and from my research uh, it's uh, been realized that um, a speed uh, limitation basically is a challenge even from what you also analyze. So yeah. what is your command doing to stem uh, the rise and speed of um, road accidents? Okay, for Ojota, uh, I resumed in Ojota on the February 4th. And uh, part of my initiative first is to get the traffic moving. Because you see, when the traffic is also flowing, it also helps us to reduce road traffic crashes on our road. Mm -hmm. And we initiated this uh, operation, traffic must flow in Ojota. If you watch from Otedola Bridge down to Alakwere, that is in collaboration with other traffic managers like Lasmers and then like the police also that were working together, mm -hmm. we said, we are going to have our men in areas that we know that are prone to traffic. Okay. Also are prone to crashes. So by the time you see the visibility of FRSE on the mm. road also it's throws scary. to the driver's consciousness yes. that we need to reduce our speed. And These behave. people are here <laughs> and you need to behave exactly. yourself most especially. <laughs> and sincerely speaking, it has really been working for us. Okay. I think if there's any uh, gridlock in Ojota, mm. now, within the next five to ten minutes, it's clear. it is cleared. And we call on the police, we call on the towing trucks who are into uh, PPP, that's a pri private partnership participation with us, and we get it done. And it is working for us. And for the consciousness of the people, knowing that we are always there, yeah. it makes them to it's, always it's, reduce and caution mm, themselves. All right. So it is working for us. Okay, Commander, let me ask you, um, uh, the, you know, the program really is to educate, entertain, and enlighten the public. I really want to know what the fresh aid uh, FRSC from the police, LASMA, we want to know what, 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 what makes the difference amongst all of you? Okay, uh, FRSC, uh, like you know, is a lead agency in traffic management. Okay. And uh, part of what we do is to have or create a robust mon uh, motoring environment for road users. And when you look at LASMA, LASMA also, they go into what we call traffic management. But basically, they work in the urban. While we work at the outskirts, like the express road, so that okay. we are able to serve the public, both in the urban and outside the okay. town. state and uh, yes. federal. Yes. Now, if you look at the police, the police is our father. Either we like it or not. Mm. They have been there before we came in. Okay. Right? So we learn from them. We also try to make some analysis for them. We also work in partnership with them. And that has really helped us in doing what we are doing because where we have crashes sometimes 
We need both the policemen. We need both the last man. We need both the Lassema. Lassema has also been doing a very wonderful job in Lagos State. That, sincerely speaking, when I got to their office and what I saw, I couldn't believe myself. Meaning, Lagos is above every other state. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Technology wise, Lagos, I'm saying it, is above <laughs> that's, that's every other state. Very Lagos outstanding. The yes, <laughs> very outstanding. Okay. When I got there, I saw, I saw the whole Lagos in the jiffy. Mm. You understand? And I saw, I said, wow, this is another New York. So you, so, now, you oh, now really can believe that it's yes, uh, yes. a city of excellence, yes, really. <laughs> yes, city of excellence, exactly. All right, interesting. Now, let's look at uh, pedestrian bridges. Um, one would expect that a lot of times, because a lot of accidents that occur on highways, in most cases, is always when uh, a, a pedestrian or a, a commuter is trying to cross the road. And before you know it, there is an accident. Uh, can you tell us about the, what, what you think is responsible for people not using the pedestrian bridge? You see, this part of the country is uh, where I don't know the essence of education for every one of us. You see, I can remember when we were in the school and we would say educated illiterate. Hmm. Or semi-illiterate. Or semi-illiterate. <laughs> Yes. I came to realize that truly, education is not about the degree you are carrying. Honestly. Education is about the ability to transform that which you have learned into practice. Activity. When we're saying home training, home training means what they have taught you at home. So that when you go back to the public, mm -hmm. you give to them what has been given to you from home. But when you go to the public, it looks as if they never even trained you. And then you will see a situation whereby they're asking, are you sure you are the true son or you are the true father of that child? Mm. Because his behavior doesn't look like yours. Mm. I don't see why Nigerians should see pedestrian bridge. And it takes them time to go through it. Look at all the barricades that the Lagos State government has done around. These are money, taxpayers' money, used in seeing that lives are protected. safe or protected but you see nigerians are even going to damage it like i went from beggar down you know i just went around and i looked at it i said what kind of a society is this you understand so damaging control in nigeria or probably in lagos it's so high the level of the illiteracy i will call it illiteracy because we really don't know the value attached to those things the government are trying to make available for us if the pedestrian bridge are there it doesn't take you two minutes. You are even more, more safer. You are not exposed to any danger. But people still prefer to pass. And the worst of it all is when you see parents going with their children. Now, what are we even teaching the children from this age? We are teaching them that with that thing is not really necessary. Let us go through the road. So that is why we grow up. Rather than learning, we see what our parents are doing. We're taking after them. So the home training is no more there. The education, the basis of the education that we said we have acquired, we are really not translating it. But so I feel this is the high time. We need to go back. You see, let me tell you something. Kai, we were doing a very wonderful job before. Mm -hmm. uh, when you, when you cross when the you road, cross, you're arrested. You're arrested. Mm. But I think we're not doing it again. We, we should not relent. We should not go back. We should not be tired. That is what I keep on telling other agencies. So this is a clarion Bamayi, call on yes. Kai. Bamayi is not to return. tired. Okay. I can walk. I need to walk because the money I'm being paid is for me to walk. So if everybody is walking like Bamayi is walking, I think we can have a better Lagos State. I think we can have a better Nigeria. I think we can have a better Nigeria. But yeah. um, I'm just wondering, could it be because a Lagos as densely populated as it is, and the fact that uh, Lagos residents, the way we believe, are always in a rush. Could that justify the reason of not using the pedestrian bridge? Yes. Where are we rushing to? Is the first question we should <laughs> ask ourselves. Like one of my friends asked me a question today. He said, Mr. Bami, you people who arrest, who will arrest you? I said, God will arrest me. And that's just the truth. If road safety cannot arrest you, mm -hmm. all right, the road can arrest you. God can arrest you. We see some crashes whereby you will be very surprised. How did this man come out from it? It is just giving you a message. Go to your church and say a testimony. And say this was what God did to me. Because it's not by anybody's power. When you see you survive a crash. When you see you get home safe. Just go back and say God 
thank you because it's not by anybody's power that you have been mm -hmm. able to make that. All right, thank you very much. Um, now let's uh, uh, look at um, uh, what the, uh, the tips you're going to give to um, road users in regards to uh, rules and regulations guides on the road. Yes, one of my first uh, tips I'm going to give to road users, I want to start from our wives. Our wives? Okay. Yes, our wives. <laughs> it's very, very important. Please don't get your husbands angered when going to the road. It's very, very important. The wife because should not get their husbands angry? Yes. Angry, okay. Yes, because it transforms back to what we call rage on the road. You take your anger from home, you take it to the Transfer road. Transfer of aggression. Transfer of aggression. And that is why you see everybody in Lagos. I laugh sometimes when you just stop somebody, immediately you stop him, he's fighting already. Maybe you are even going to allow him to go, he doesn't know. Maybe what you are going to stop him for is something that will even assist him. He doesn't know. But immediately he sees you on the road and you raise your hand, he's already angry. And by the time you are going to ask them some questions, sir, uh, probably they see the way you talk to them and at the end of the day, they say, go, see them. Oh, thank you very much. So please, wives should not make their husbands angry. We know this is the period of school fees, house rent. Don't let us take it back to the road. Let us be able to finish it up at home, and you should always wish your husband's safe journey. That is not number one. Number two tips that I want to give, use of phone is not allowed in any form while driving on Nigerian roads. Use this. I think you should say that yes. again. Yes. Use of, use of phone huh? while driving on Nigerian road. It's prohibited. It's, it's prohibited mm. in any form. Listen to that word, quote me and underline it. It is in the National Road Traffic Regulation 2012, all right, that you should not use phone in any form. If you're saying I'm using a Bluetooth, you're saying I'm using a speaker, it is not allowed because messages that you receive can take you off the road. And it's true. A good news, let it come for example, you are among the people that have been choosing, that will be going for a course in the U.S. And you got the information while driving. How are you going to react? excitement you'll be very happy you start calculating the dollars the exchange even you will also try and call some of your friends to know the uh, the exchange rate the current exchange rate so that takes you off the road you understand and the same thing with the bad news if you get the bad news for example also it doesn't make you concentrate while you're going all through you try to be making calls to find out the end of the case that you have been brought before another thing is speed they said speed trios you know when you're speeding in the vehicle and the ac is blowing on you you forget automatically that you are driving what we call a vehicle made by man mm. not made by god you understand though god uses man to make that vehicle Absolutely. but that vehicle is subject to error it is only god that doesn't make an error remember exactly. but that vehicle that you're driving has an it's error prone to you error. understand and it's prone to error so you should always remember that there are rules in driving this vehicle if the rules of engagement are not being properly followed then you could disengage yourself from the rules mm -hmm. and when you disengage yourself from the rules if you miss it by not dying which we are not praying for then it will be able to make you say testimonies tomorrow all right, so that's basically your tips to yes, um, Lagos residents. Okay, uh, before now, uh, the FRC used to have those we call road marshals. Uh, they used some of them from the entertainment world and all the personalities that are known out there. What is the state of that right now? Uh, they are doing wonderfully well. Okay. They are still very much alive very much alive i mean in terms of the special martial arms mm. of the federal road safety that you're exactly. talking about they are still very much around the only thing that i can see that is making them not to be very effective not not effective for okay, you not, not to, to see, see them, them often is that you know we have moved away from the urban okay down to the express road okay. and most of the time they come to work on the express road because our offices are no more in the urban, you understand, has made the uh, special marshals also to move from the urban and join together and co-locate with the offices 
that are within their jurisdiction. So they work every last Friday, uh, Saturday of the month. If you come to Ojota, we have what we call the state patrol. We have what we call the national patrol. And I want to promise you, if you come next Saturday to Ojota, you'll be very surprised. You'll be meeting a load. I call them a load really? of overloaded okay. of special marshals still working. And the same thing, when you go to uh, places like Ikorodutu, you still see them working. If you go to places like Ekpe, you still see them working. They also engage people. They do researches because part of their work is to do research. They join hands together in the road safety clubs that we have in secondary schools. Most of the time, they are the ones that sponsor most of the programs that has to do with the road safety clubs. Mm -hmm. And they engage in enlightenment of offenders too. Mm. They also arrest. So they work. They also arrest too. Yes. So what, what, what we qualify you to uh, be part of this FRC special marshal? Yes. Uh, one, you must be of a working class. Okay. Two, you must have your vehicle. Three, you must have a job that you're doing. Four, you must have the uh, documents starting from the driver's license to your vehicle particulars all valid so that when you are being called, you know, it's a call to service. And mm. I call it service to humanity, which okay, they say call, call, is call. always the best work of life. Mm -hmm. You yes. can say that again. Yes, service to humanity <laughs> is the best work Okay, of life. I believe you. Yes. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, um, so uh, I'm about to ask uh, the question that... Um, if, uh, if I'm interested, or any other person who is interested, yeah. is there a way that uh, you appreciate the special marshals? Yes. If you are interested, you apply to the sector commander, Federal Road Safety, okay. uh, Ojodu. That's Lagos State Sector Command. And uh, they have an office the there of the spe special marshal who also treats it and at the end of the day, they approve if you are qualified and they do the inauguration, and you have been put in a unit. Mm -hmm. If you want to have a unit here, maybe you want to be controlling traffic, let's <laughs> have a group of you that want to be doing like 10. A you broadcaster, can, uh, yes, <laughs> alongside with, with that. Fantastic. So that's going to be double so work. That, no, 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 it's not going to be do double work, because already okay. now, you people are working with us. Okay. It is just complete, way, yes. By lightning. Yes, I will even call you a special machine. Really? Now. Yes, because okay, already you are working with us, of but course. the only thing is that you have not fine-tune what will document you as, as a special marshal. Mm. But already you're doing a special work now mm. by marshalling part of the work we're doing. You know. So I call you a special marshal <laughs> and ambassador. Let me give you that word. <laughs> when think, the sector commander uh, comes, just tell him, I may meet you an, an ambassador. ambassador. And now I think the viewers know already. Yes. I'm an ambassador so you, you can RRC. arrest. You can also give us information. <laughs> okay. Because we need some of the information For that will help deliver. us to deliver. All right, that's beautiful. Okay, now let's talk about those who drive without driver's license. A lot of times you see people put their cars on the road and they don't have their uh, a, a license, driver's license. What offense do such people stand to get? And um, of what importance is it for them to have the driver's license? Uh, I, I, I know that the only thing that is giving you the rights and the power to go near the vehicle. Near, the, I'm using the word go near a vehicle. Mm -hmm. Is one that because you are claiming to be a driver, you must have a valid driver's license. You must have a valid driver's license. When you don't have a driver's license, you don't have a business, you don't have any business whatsoever to go near an automobile. And now, when you are being arrested for not having a driver's license, you will be given a ticket that is 10,000 naira fine for okay. FRSC. And what we do, what we do in FRSC, once you are arrested for not having a driver's license, we'll make sure before you even go and pay your fine, you already go and process your driver's license. If it is for renewal, you go and renew it. If it's for you to go and start all over, you go and start all over. When we have evidence that you are already complying, is when we are going to release your vehicle to go. Really? And yes, that's what we're doing now. So for every commuters, for every road users, for every driver, if you don't have a driver's license, I'm passing this message to you right now. Listen from Bamei. 
you don't have any business on that road. Well, you know, a lot of people wouldn't want to believe all that you said because um, uh, the pe pe peculiar nature of Nigeria and some of the uh, security agencies, basically, uh, they believe that um, corruption has eaten deep into their fabric. And so if you have some amount of money, you can squeeze it into their palm and you have your way. What do you have to say? You see, let me tell you something. Corruption, 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 corruption. It is like a topic that we are preaching. But the same corruption that we are preaching, I can also say no to corruption, no to corruption, no to corruption, no, no to, to corruption. corruption. That would be beautiful. If you are singing a different tone from what others are singing, I think it would better this country. Because I still believe, I am Bamey. I want to speak for myself. I don't want to speak for you. I don't want you to believe in me. I want to believe in myself. And once I have that ideology that what I'm preaching is it's the right thing practice. and is what I'm practicing, then it leaves away the room for corruption or for corrupt men. It does. The truth of the matter is that, yes, every one of us were giving back to right. our parents or probably the same parents. But not every one of us will behave or follow the ideology of our parents. Okay, so which the means black sheep the bad, must, bad yes, the eggs. black sheep must be there. The mm. bad eggs must be there. The bad ones must be there. But there are still some that will still be preaching the gospel of safety. Suffice to say that it yeah. is the bad eggs that are involved are in the crime. And if acts. they if they allow you, like we used to say, I could remember when we were trained, they said when you collect money and that man goes ahead to kill himself they said the blood of that man It'll is hanging on, on your head mm -hmm. and it's true you see conscience is not dead fear of god is not dead some of us are still afraid of the judgment of god either we like it or not this is not a religious campaign but the judgment of god still stands all right beautiful um thank you very much let me quickly state here that uh, viewers at home you have the opportunity to also make your contribution a number for which you can get through is scrolled right now on your screen if you have any question for uh, frsc commander please call in and let us uh, uh have your say all right uh, back to you now sir um uh, truck drivers and owners of trucks um what's your word of advice to them because in terms of managing the road and having uh sustained good roads we realize that in most cases trucks maybe because of the weight and all of that always damage the road what do you have to say in this direction and your advice to truck drivers yes uh we in frc we mostly work with the truck owners first we enlighten nice. them because if the owner of a good doesn't know the relevance, then it is difficult for him to see the value before those people using the product. So we work on the owners of those trucks. We have meetings with them. They are part of our stakeholders. Really? Nice. Yes, we really have meetings. I know the state, well, the Komasha has met times without numbers. Okay. When we are to introduce anything in FRC, we start from the owners of those trucks first, okay. so that they can as well speak to their drivers. Then at the end of the day, we also engage their drivers, and they have to be on ground mm. with us. So we don't just engage the drivers without engaging the owners of the truck, so that you know you don't go back home when you don't have the knowledge of something. There's no how somebody can come and sensitize you mm. about it. But when the owners and the drivers are aware of what we are really preaching, then it goes a long way to help us in what we are doing. You see, most of them want to engage in businesses that the owners are not really aware of. Oh, okay. Um, for example, now, if you are loading at the loading bay, the owners of the vehicles are not there to see how you overload their vehicles. Mm. And I know if some of them are there, 
they will not really want you to overload their vehicles like that. Because when you overload a vehicle too much, beyond the capacity that is expected, you're also killing that vehicle. You're also damaging the engine. The wears and tears of that vehicle, the depreciation value goes much more higher. So the owner will definitely would not want to see them do that. But you know, you cannot be going about Come monitor them always. Yes, everywhere they are going to. So, and at the speed they also go to. The owners of the vehicle will want you to go at the speed that he knows will benefit him, will benefit his vehicle, and then will benefit what he's paying for. That is the safety of the goods getting to the final consumer or the final owner. But when the goods doesn't get to them as a result of crash, you know, definitely it's also affecting the owners of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So all these will get them engaged and sincerely speaking, they are trying their best, but I know we need to do more and we'll always be engaging them. So we're never tired to talk to them. All right, let's look at all tankers. All tankers, trailers, they have also been proven to have also been uh, major uh, causes of accident, you know. And um, I just want to know, what's your word of advice again to this um, oil tankers in Lagos State? Yes, the oil tankers... The reckless, I'm talking yes, about the yes, reckless driving. Yes, I, I really want to talk to them, and we have been talking to them, we are always engaging them, uh, that they need to be patient. You see, there's just one thing we need to drive on Nigerian road. The number one thing that we need to drive on Nigerian road is patience. We need to be patient with other road users. We need to think of them just as we think about ourselves. You are going to a particular destination. They are also going to a particular destination. When you are both patient, you all get there where you are supposed to get there. It is not a rivalry thing. It is not a competition. It is not about who got there first. It is not about who came back. But what we're talking about is that we're talking about safety. We should ensure that every road users are safe before us because it is very, very important. So they should stop that. And when they are fatigued, because another thing I see causes that thing is that they are tired, but they just want to get to where they are going to by all means. I don't want to sleep on the road. I don't want to waste. If they tell them to wait in some garages and take some nap, maybe rest for 15, 30 minutes before taking off. You know, no, 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 no problem. I have what I will take. You know, take cola not. All those are not what can make you. You, you can't just cheat nature. nature. Exactly. When you are tired, it doesn't have any other language. You are tired means you are tired. When you need to rest, when you don't rest, then you will want to rest in peace. Mm -hmm. And you know when we say rest in peace, mm. rest in peace means you are going six feet below. Mm. So when you don't want to rest, like you have been advised by FRC, then that means you want to go and rest in peace. But don't go and rest in peace because remember, there's somebody that you are being entrusted to, mm. uh, your wives, your children. So please, we are begging them. Mm. Don't use intoxicants to drive. Mm. Some of them will take coffee. Some of them even go as far as taking drugs. Some of them go as far as occupying uh, and whatsoever. <laughs> All these things are not working. They don't work with our health. Mm -hmm. It damages more, most especially when you are about 40 years old and mm. above. Those things kidney, work. Yes, lungs, with kidneys and, and lungs again. So please, mm. they should please take notes. Mm. Like they say, it's better to be uh, late than to be the late. Yes. So, um, and heeding to your advice now, let's talk about um, safety of school children, basically pupils who cross the road and all of that. Uh, what would you say in this regards? Yes, the people who cross the road, uh, I will advise the children most of the time when they want to cross and uh, they find out it's a busy road. They should always be patient. I remember what we used to do then when we were small, when we want to cross, cross a place that we know will be a problem mm. to us. We try and go to the policeman, exactly. we signal the policeman, and the policeman or the last man or the BIO or even the FRC crosses us through that road. Mm. But now, children are not doing that, you know. The technology has taken everyone of us, I would say they are children of technology or whatsoever. Mm. But sincerely speaking, my, my, those my are some of the things, those are some <laughs> of the things they are supposed to be doing. Another thing is that when they get to any place they call zebra crossing. On zebra cross crossing, you don't run. You make sure vehicles stop for you. When they stop for you, 
you go on that road and you don't play. And another thing I observe, you don't face oncoming, uh, you don't back a vehicle. You should always make sure you face oncoming vehicle when walking to school. Not just the school children, even pedestrians sometimes, they back traffic and I don't think uh, that's a good one. You always make sure you face traffic coming so that if there's any danger in front of you, you are able to run away from such danger. But we'll be working with them on May 27th as Children's, Children's Day. Day okay. And then we have a road walk for uh, children, uh, school children. And after that, we'll do some sensitization and some talk. Start with playing. Them too. So we're always having program annually. Because I'm school. also even thinking that cause of road accident and all of that might also be because government is not uh, involved more in enlightenment campaign for people to know what they are supposed to do and what not to do. However, I would like you to enlighten the people about this zebra crossing quickly. Yes, the zebra crossing is not meant for zebra. Let me first <laughs> say that because I could remember I saw a cartoon one time and uh, yes. the man was trying to cross while the driver was coming. Eddie. And uh, he said, ah, okay, slow down now. Can't you see this is zebra? Cause he said, stand there. If not a zebra, you'll be stand there. If I don't go kill you. <laughs> so, you know, it is oh part God. of the mentality yes. <laughs> that when we get to zebra crossing mm -hmm. and you see one, two, three, four people waiting at the edge of the zebra crossing, it is not saying conditionally. It is a must that you are supposed to wait for them to cross the road. And I want to say something. If a vehicle waits for you, to cross, make sure other vehicles are waiting. Because we have some of them that are so impatient drivers, like the Maruas, like the Okadas, they don't wait. So drivers, please, let us also do something. Uh, do like the Oyoman, so you should also use your mm -hmm. left hand to also wave other drivers to slow down so that people can pass. Zebra crossing is one of the places where we say the right of way, where if you hit anybody on that place, yeah. it is criminal. Mm -hmm. Very, very criminal. You don't hit anybody on the zebra crossing mm -hmm. and go to court straight. So Nigerians should know that. All right, beautiful. Okay, now let's talk about how can we better manage our roads in Lagos State? Because there's taxpayers' money that they're using for these roads. And as people, to, we need the right orientation for us to manage the roads. Yes. The best way, first and foremost, I think uh, we can manage Nigerian or probably Lagos roads, most especially like the one we're talking about, as uh, so we should always try and have these maintenance policies, whereby if it is yearly, we'll go after those places that are bad. We shouldn't wait for them to become very worst before we start taking on them. So we should do patches on the roads where appropriate, like the Lagos State is doing now. I went around some roads uh, from Bega today. I stay along that area, mm -hmm. and I saw most of the road. As at the time I woke up this morning, I saw mm -hmm. everything was looking mm -hmm. fresh. So Lagos State is really working for most of the roads that are in Lagos State. Another thing I want Nigerians not to be doing, repairing vehicles on the road. It is very, very, very wrong. Mm -hmm. When your vehicle has a fault, the first thing that you're supposed to do, call for a towing it. truck. Okay. Call for a towing truck and tow that vehicle off the road to a safe place where you can repair the vehicle. Don't turn the road to a mechanic side. Village. <laughs> you understand? So these are also affecting the roads. Mm -hmm. And where it's we have traffic. signs, you know, we have signs. Good signs. Yes, we have signs because that Good is signs. one of those things I want to talk mm, about. Please. You will see them, they will go and place posters. You know, thank God the, 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 the election thing is all over. over. But it's not just about the election thing alone. You see some posters of churches, they place it on road signs. I don't think this is normal. It is not too good. Those things are not being placed there for you to place posters on it. Let us look at the road signs. Let us drive with the road signs. There are a lot of road signs that could guide you to where you are going to. Okay. Some also will tell you uh, you have two meters or two kilometers to Away. this place you are going to. And by the time you put such things there, it makes to people right. will be going about not knowing where 
we are going, and it looks as if the government is not trying. The government is just trying their best. But I know we can all do better. Let us do our own part so that the government also can also complement. All right, Commander, before I let you go, the aspect of having to call a towing vehicle if your car breaks down on the road, yes. uh, would that not uh, attract some amount of money? Charges. It has maybe to. that's why uh, our road users, or uh, maybe that's what they're running away from. No, the law does not permit you to do that. Okay. It's because uh, the way the system is in Nigeria, you understand, we are supposed to have just like this Ojota tow gate, where we have different kind of tow trucks there. We are supposed to have a central number or a central line where any of your breakdown of your vehicle, you can call on that central line and they send a tow truck to come and move your vehicle. You have to pay. Okay. Most of the times, it might be calculated in kilometers by kilometers. Mm. You understand? But you must pay for it. It's the services. All right. On that note, I want to say many thanks to you for coming on Super Eye. Thank you very much. And for my viewers, I've been speaking with the unit commander of uh, Federal Road Safety Corps, FRSC in Ojota, Umar Bamayi. Many thanks for coming. And I hope if I call you again, you would oblige. Anytime we're always available. Like you said, we are here to come and enlighten, of course. entertain. Yes. And at the same time, remember, educate. I'm going back Inform. to the road to enforce. Because when okay. I enlighten mm. and not enforce, mm. that means I'm coming here and to entertain. And your job entertain. is incomplete. Because I'm not coming here for entertainment. <laughs> what I'm going for you? is enforcement. All purpose. right, it's beautiful. Well, many yeah. thanks, viewers, for watching Super Eye today. Let's do this again next week and we apologize for the uh, football match that they've been playing now that is uh, what is responsible for the changing time of super eye uh, please remember to join us again and um, next week promises to be as exciting as today's edition well i'm at dinka where you're at jivoy many thanks to my producers uh from Omani to jb and mike of semeke um this is where we draw the cutting on this week's edition of Super Eye, I'm Adinika Way Ajivoy saying you have a pleasant night rest. Oshadi, one of the areas in Lagos State.